Anyone that tries to convince you that grossing is meant to put food on the table is unlikely to be trustworthy. At least if they hunt the same woods as me. Birds around my stomping ground are skittish. Occasionally you get one with a bad case of the dumbs, and it sits there thinking you're not human. But the usual case is that grouse flush early and rarely hold. Doesn't mean that grouse hunting is foolish. It just means that expectations need to be tempered. On this trip I flushed somewhere between six and a dozen grouse, and I had a shot at one. In all I spent about 20 hours walking over the course of three days. But it was hot, so that takes part of the blame. To find rough grouse, just walk old logging and ATV trails. This is probably the most common way. If you hunt weekdays, you are less likely to bump into other people. Most bird hunters I know will drive around on ATV, something I disagree with in general principle. You cover a lot more ground and will bring home many times more grouse, but I find this to detract from the idea of grouse hunting, which to me is just a very long walk in the woods. Besides, walking gives me more time to reflect, revisit old fishing holes, and discover new ones. For something of a challenge, work the outside perimeter of the body of water. You will find more undisturbed birds that way, ones that lazier hunters can't be bothered to pursue. Spotting birds isn't easy, even when they are in plain sight. Their camouflage resembles dry leaves so well that you could easily step on them before seeing them. A keen eye will discern the rough shape of a grouse, or a sudden twitch, or you will produce grouse-like forms where they belong, just tucked under an evergreen shrub, just there. I find that birds are more easily hunted on cool but sunny mornings, as birds will make their way to trails to find early morning insects, edible leaves, grasses, and pick some grit for their crops. If you can find the time though, traveling far north is much more productive, as they endure less pressure. These more northern birds often hold for easy shots, even with a compound bow or recurve. Grousing really reminds me of my early years hunting, before the allure of big game had ever come to my mind. I would spend the full fall season on foot, porting my bow for one or two chances to take grouse. In all my life, I only took two by bow. Grouse are typically quite small, at around 1 to 2 pounds, very lean, but they make exceptional table fare. Mixed with some oil and mushrooms with a side of wild high bush cranberry makes a fall meal fit for any outdoorsman. No day hunting birds is wasted. There is simply no way to describe the smell of damp woods and a creek bottom in vibrant colors of early fall. I just thought I'd stop in over here at uh, Jeremy's bear stand. Pretty impressive. He built that all out of lumber. <laughs> he said he didn't want to buy one, he wanted a two man one. And he wasn't too sure about the other one, so have a look at that. Pretty cool. He says it's not ready to stand in yet, so I won't go up yet. Needs a bit more work to make it secure. I just got to, we started that bear bait a while ago. Not a lot of people like bear hunting, but it's the way of the north, people. And uh, people think it's too easy. You just put a bear, a bait out, and then you get a bear because they can't help themselves, and bears are just going to go after everything. 
Well, the story is we've been baiting this, or Jeremy's been baiting this for about two months. I had a bear coming in every day for, well, not every day, every couple days for about a week or so, a week and a half, and then uh, just stopped coming. Gone. And you can see the baits here, it hasn't been hit. So, uh, Part of the plan when I came up here was I wanted to do some grouse hunting but kind of in the day as an aside and I would come and hunt evenings for bear um, and put some real meat on the table because as you know you can't live on grouse it's just too small too small of a package too many calories burnt doing it so uh, that didn't turn out so we're making the most of it now doing some grouse during the day and uh, Plan to do a little bit of waterfowl too, so I think that'll be another video. You have to keep watch for that. I'll just switch around here, and you can see the view from here. So that's the stand from the bait. The bait's right here, and uh, you put this on top. It's just a little old barrel that was found in the woods here. You can see inside there. There's a. Uh, some old moldy donuts now, which haven't been touched in a while. So that bear, that bear disappeared just like the bear in the spring disappeared. Never to be seen again. So who knows? No guarantees in nature, guys. Not even if you have, you're leaving food out and bait out. So if you do want to pluck your grouse, just Remember that the skin is extremely fragile and you don't want to grab a whole pile of feathers at the same time and pull because then you're just going to tear the skin. And the reason we'd want to keep the skin is because that's where the fat and flavor will come from. So I walked around for about seven hours, something like that, and uh, managed to get the one grouse. I flushed uh, one other one about 50 yards away, no chance for a shot. Uh, another one, it's a funny story, I was sitting down having a break, there's an old tire in the woods just sitting there. So I sat down and I looked over to my left, and I, that looks like a grouse but it's not a grouse. Boy that looks like a grouse but it's not a grouse. I looked over again, stared at it, seeing if it would move didn't move and I started fidgeting around while I was sitting sure enough it flushed so I had a grouse about 30 yards away plain view and uh, I had I just couldn't see it couldn't see for what it was so the thing about these grouse is that they are very tricky to see um, if they're not moving and they're they're perfectly still you most of the time you'll just overlook them uh, it's early in the season, but late September, leaves haven't really dropped yet. So there's a lot of cover for them, making it extra tricky to spot them. Uh, I found the, the best way to spot them is to look for something that looks like a grouse, but not necessarily is a grouse. Sometimes they'll start to get agitated and twitch, and they'll kind of look more like a chicken. So they'll kind of move their head and then they'll kind of fan up a little bit, and then they'll kind of twitch back and forth. So that's what you're looking for when you're spotting for grouse. You won't make a living hunting grouse. Uh, they're very small bird, maybe two pounds, two and a half pounds at the most. Most of it's waste that you can't use. Um, I'm gonna take this bird right now and I'm going to pluck it. It's not a very traditional way to prepare the grouse. Um, the more traditional way is to step on the, on the wings, pull on the feet, everything separates. You're left with an, uh, two uh, nice pieces of breast lean meat but if you want to make the most of your grouse the best way to do it is to pluck it and uh, but that takes a lot of work and not the kind of work that most people want to take I'll uh, save the liver and I'll probably save the stomach uh, I'm meeting up with Jeremy a little bit later on today and I'm hoping he's gonna connect me with some mushrooms and I'll make a nice pot stew uh, with the grouse mushroom and uh, I'll turn that into a meal so anyway, here's a fairly small grouse. They do get a little bit bigger than that. And they are a lot of work, but they're a lot of fun to hunt. 
So I'm gonna pluck this up now and uh, I'll meet up with Jeremy and I'll cook this up. So if you take your time and do a good job, you'll end up with a nice clean bird, a fairly clean bird. There's still a few little feathers here, or the starts of feathers anyway, that should be removed. But that'll go nicely into the pot. I just have to take the guts out and uh, be all set. So this is more in, in line with how um, hunter-gatherers would prepare a bird if they got one to make use of the whole thing. And I would like to remind you that waste is relative. So while I did a good job plucking this bird and I won't waste anything per se, it means another animal won't get to feed off my waste. And so waste is a human term. Okay, so here it is, the finished bird. As you can see, I haven't wasted anything. <clears throat> I haven't wasted anything. But it's a good time to talk about what waste really means. <clears throat> so, well, nothing here I've thrown out. I've taken only the feathers off, which aren't edible to any animal. And I haven't left anything here for other creatures. But waste is a relative term. Nature doesn't waste. Meaning if I killed the bird and left it, for example, 100% would cons be considered as human waste because it's edible to people. But an animal wouldn't waste it. An animal would pick this up and eat it. 100% would be to their benefit. Now, if I let half this animal go, like say, for example, the intestines and innards and the stomach and the brain, then we might say that 50% was waste. But nature's gonna pick it up and eat it, so nature's not going to waste. Waste is a relative term. So when people say you waste an animal or you didn't eat the whole thing, it's not, it's not how the world works, it's not how the universe works. Another animal, another creature is gonna pick that animal up and eat it. So nothing ever disappears, nothing is ever wasted. It just fits back into the cycle, and continues. So before I go find uh, Jeremy and we get some mushrooms on the go, I'll talk about what I'm using. I have a Remington 870 Express. Uh, I'm using uh, lead shot because it's permissi uh, permitted, permissible for uh, grouse land game. You can't use it for waterfowl for obvious reasons. The lead gets in the water system and pollutes it. Um, this gun actually comes with a rifled barrel. So I can remove uh, the, the um, smooth barrel for a rifle barrel so I can hunt big game animals like deer. It's a 20 gauge. Uh, I see no reason to use a 12. There's, it's, there's plenty of power here to knock down turkey, uh, deer, bear, small game, rabbits, um, and grouse. So that's all good. Um, I like to recommend these too. These are Howard, uh, Howard Light earmuffs they're electronic so there's a, a uh, amplifier on the side so when you put them on you can set the volume here and then you can hear ambient noise and uh, I found this is pretty good like I can tell roughly what direction the animals are located in when I'm walking um, I wore them for seven hours straight while it's like 30 degrees out it's pretty hot I found them tolerable shooting them I noticed no noise um, a little bit of, sh uh, of shooting experience, but uh, notice that my ears ring pretty pretty badly if uh, if I don't use them. And last year when I went out, I found they, you know, the, the ringing was persistent. And then even in a silent room or fairly quiet room, I could hear persistent ringing. And that's from loud noise uh, accumulation over time. So the young kids out there, you guys are watching these, this video. You guys, if you're gonna do any shooting, get, yourself a pair of headphones no exception um, noise damage from shooting is immediate and permanent meaning you don't get that back and if you're unfortunate if you en end up as one of the unfortunate ones you'll end up with tinnitus which is a loud ringing to some people persistent loud ringing in their ears that lasts a lifetime even when you know forever it just doesn't go away 
Sometimes it gets a little bit better, other times it gets a little bit worse. And uh, people that are really sensitive about that kind of noise, it can drive them insane. So I learned my lesson by having a little bit of ringing to, to uh, invest in these. They're about 115 bucks Canadian. I bought them online. And uh, I would not hesitate to recommend them. Howard Light, uh, these are the Impact Pro 32 decibel uh, noise cancellation. The only way to get any higher than that is to double up and use um, uh, the ones you put directly in your ear in addition to these. So, and putting them on, I found there's no, there's no blocking the uh, getting a good cheek, but um, I'll just demonstrate right now. So they do catch a little bit, but it's not bothersome. And you can get uh, other ones that are, I think 22, don't quote me on that, 22 decibel cancellation and they're slim fit. So they're about half that. So you can see these are pretty bulky, but I didn't want to mess around. If I was going to get ear protection, I'm just going to wear ear protection. And the battery life on this is like days. And after four hours, they shut off. So Howard Light, uh, Impact Pro, and uh, Remington 870 Express, a good all-round gun. Uh, it's not too heavy. I recommend getting a sling if you're going to do a lot of walking. And aside from that, all I do is use a pouch. And I can throw my small game in there. And then I carry uh, spare ammo in the front. And uh, I just throw a Ziploc bag in there. So if I end up getting something, I throw it on my waist. And uh, keep going. How's that for a loaded canoe? Talk about them. Are they cranberry? Yeah. They taste like a cranberry, but they're not related to the bog cranberries. Oh. And what I'm watching for, especially, is these nightshade vines that are growing in along beside it. You can see they're, they've got their berry crust clusters here, but the berries either didn't form or they've already come off. We don't want to get them mixed in. They're pretty good. Tastes like a cranberry? Yeah. They'll make a good sauce, except they have pits. That's alright. We'll strain them out. Alright, so we picked up some cranberries on the way in. That's going to make a nice sauce, side sauce, for the grouse. How does that look? Nice and red colored. Beauty. Jeremy, grab some mushrooms for me. What kind of mushrooms? Oyster mushrooms. Oyster. I don't know anything about mushrooms. Go check out one wild crafter. Jeremy, back there doing work. He'll hook you up with the mushrooms eventually. I'm sure he plans on doing a full series of it. Yep. I got my plucked out grouse. It's gonna go in the pot. I still have to take the guts out. And figure out what I'm gonna do with that part. All right, so that's next. So we're gonna put the mushrooms. <laughs> the mushrooms flew everywhere. We're gonna throw that in them with the mushrooms and then we're gonna simmer it down nicely. The organs were mostly not useful. I took out the intestines. This is the gizzard. It was full of rocks. You can see I've washed it out. There's a liner here. And Jeremy's saying just to take it out. So we're going to take out that liner. I'm not going to eat that. But this is muscle. So that'll be edible. 
So that's going to go in the pot. And uh, we've got what looks like basically a rubber chicken. So no waste. There's nothing that's going to be wasted. We're going to throw some mushrooms in there. A little bit of water and we'll simmer that down. It should be good. Put some cranberry sauce on there. Set to go. So we got lucky and Jeremy has some leftover bear fat. So of course that's going to go in. And just a little bit of water. There we go. We'll cover that up. And we're going to simmer it by the fire. Secret weapon. Oh, secret weapon. Adobo spice? No. <laughs> Maple sugar, dude. We gotta catch a fish first. These days are way too short. Not getting anything done. So we're eating in the dark. That's the cranberry sauce with maple sugar added. Oh, that's really good. We didn't drain the seeds out. Didn't have a really good way to do it. Get this little birdlet out. Mmm. <clears throat> yep. It's good. And the skin's good too. It's nice and fatty. Yep, that's the way to go. Skin on. It's a hard earned meal. I really want to try the head, but it's still too warm. It's nice and fatty too. Oh, bunch of juice just squirted out. We get the tongue out. Tongue meat. small brain. There's an eye. The eye's good. A little bit of fat behind the eye. I don't think you want to watch me eat this whole thing, so you get the idea. I'm going to finish this off. Small bird, but it's a pretty good meal. Pretty filling so far. It's good, eh? Dessert first. <laughs> There's a whole leg left. Uh, it will take the other half of the breast. Through night, send me some, send me two flashlights. So you're seeing this courtesy of through night. I'm gonna test the flashlight over the course of the weekend, filming a bunch of stuff, and I'll uh, let you know how I like it. Brothing. There's some brain. It's the paleo eater's form of juicing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the brains are good. Yeah, I found the brain. But yeah, that that you could throw in a pot. All the bones. That's the crop. How did the crop? Oh, it, it was because it's attached on top of the breast. <gasps> That's your salad portion. Look, it's been eating wild raisins, I think. I wonder why I kept tasting s stomach. <laughs> like I didn't keep the stomach in there. What the hell? It's a bit tangy. Mhm. Mm <laughs> I was wondering where I was getting the tang from. You guys are really messing out if you don't go out and do this stuff. Mhm. Mm the people are missing out the most are the complainers that watch me. Because <laughs> I have no idea. This is bush, this is real life. This is how life is supposed to go. Not complaining on the keyboard. We're eating all wild this weekend. By Monday I'll be up to day 42. 42 days. 
eating paleo wild foods. Mm -hmm. and this is as an extension to the Wilderness Living Challenge to see the feasibility of our weighing in and weighing out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like if you can't maintain your weight on a paleo diet, then what are we doing? Yeah. So you'll report that on his, on his channel, One, yeah. Wild, One Wild Crafter. I'm not gonna, I don't even know. Actually, I do know no a little spoilers. bit. I know a little bit, but yeah, you'll watch it. You watch your series to find out how that goes. Yeah, it's been a pretty interesting experiment. That's so good, it's worth spitting all the seeds out. It is, eh? Mm -hmm. Add to that the mushrooms and the cranberries. Cranberries are fantastic. I would recommend that for sure. Cheers, guys. Remember, don't waste anything. Keep it all for yourself. Don't let nature have anything.